being sent, but I never got it. Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. It's the meeting of the uh, Town Council's Financial Oversight Committee of May 21st, 2019 at 10.30 a.m. in this library conference room. Is anyone else taping this meeting other than LCAT? No one is. So uh, prior, I'm going to, the third item on the agenda was review the final report, which we're not to yet because I want to um, read a letter that was given to me after the close of business yesterday. Um, let's see. Oh, I got too many emails. Bear with me here. This was sent to Tom Florence. Uh, would you please make sure the Financial Oversight Committee sees the attached letter for tomorrow's meeting? Thank you for your help. John Fonte, Collector Treasurer. And the letter reads, Dear committee members, I have a concern regarding the vote that was taken during the May 17th, 2019 meeting for the Collector Treasurer's Office part-time staff member requested to be increased to a full-time staff member. The vote was made to defer this request to, to a purchase of software from fiscal year 2019's budget uh, with a total of $140,000. I would like you to be aware the Collector Treasurer's Department did not have a software request in fiscal year 2019. The item you are referring to was under the Accounting Finance Department's request and it was for a new time and attendance payroll software. This time and attendance payroll software will not be for the Collector Treasurer's Office for it is not a function of this department. It is a function that is handled in the Accounting Finance Department. With that said, I would ask that you please reconsider, revote on the budget line item of turning the part of turning the part time, I'm sorry, time collector treasurer staff member into a full-time staff member. Thank you for your time and consideration. Sincerely, Don Fondi, CC, Denise Menard, and Sarah Menard. Uh, I don't know how many of you received it. I, I did not, did not forward did it. Not. Okay. Um, I just forwarded it to you, Tom. I got it. it Tom okay. Florence got it. Okay. I was just looking at the distribution. You just sent it to me? Just, just now. a minute ago. Yeah, yeah I, I won't get it until I get home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, that being said, uh, I'll entertain a motion to reconsider that. If anyone wants to make it, we're into doing our final report, which is due tonight. Do I hear anything in favor of changing that recommendation uh, with the understanding that it, there was no software? I believe there's uh, three full-time, one part-time person in the, that department and a full-time department head. I researched it after I received the letter from Tom. So part of our rationale was inaccurate? Is that yeah, that, that, that portion was. Um, and I think our rationale also in not to allow full-time positions, reluctant to allow full-time positions unless they were clearly justifiable and extremely needed. Yeah. So if I don't have a motion, it will remain the same. Uh, I mean, I, to discuss is one thing. To, yeah. to vote it is, is another. Um, and one of the hesitations I had and over and above that was just the structure of the increase, Don, because the additional salaries, uh, the benefits that we would take on by converting to the full time, the additional benefits actually was higher than the incremental salary amount. So it was kind of a, a, a big bang for, you know, the adding those, those hours. So it didn't seem like, in my way, in the the most economical way to to gain more capacity. Um, 
So are we looking for a motion mm -hmm. to um, mm -hmm. reopen reopen the discussion to see I'm, if we can I'm find common ground? Pleasure, I'm at the pleasure of the committee. If uh, you want to let it stand, there will be no motion. Um, we All our figures are already pretty much set. Not that I want to give her due, due time, you know, due courtesy. Um, but we had a policy of deferring those. If I don't hear a motion, it will stand as is. And at this late date, we have no options. Okay. I'm sorry, John. Uh, it doesn't appear as though the committee is willing to move forward with that. Um, hopefully next year you can reapply or resubmit the request. It's just that uh, people this year have said no new positions, and we have tried to be very mindful of that. Um, if there's corresponding equipment purchases that require a full-time position, I believe we've only gone along with one full-time position for this year. And uh, other people, as Jim said, and we're very mindful of the cost of the benefits that go along uh, with full-time positions. They, they um, I won't say they're excessive, but they're extremely high. Okay? All right, may I speak one, say one thing? Sure. Oh. Pardon? May I say one thing? Or? Mm. Yes, you may. Okay. I wasn't to sure. the chair. Okay. Um, so basically, last year, I went for the same position, and I was told by the council that because the department was technically reformed, reorganized, and newer, that they wanted me to wait a full year to determine whether or not it was still needed. Mm -hmm. So this year I did present it again, and I gave a whole layout of the information of why the position was needed. Yeah. Um, technically, when the department was all one, shall we say, when the yes. first was part of the collector treasure, we had more counter coverage. Now it's hard to keep up with the day-to-day -day work without enough people greeting the counter, answering the telephone. So that is why I requested the position again, because it's been a full year yeah. since I requested the first time. Um, okay, understood. Understood, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I see Scott is here. Um, you were not on our agenda for today. Uh, we're finalizing. Is there anything you want to briefly say to us? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I know there's been a lot of talk about the uh, dispatch department uh, and our budget um, as of uh, late, so just uh, wanted to bring some con uh, concerns to the committee's attention. Uh, I did send a letter, I don't know if you guys received it, dated uh, May 18th. Um, that's so long. Sure. Well, maybe we did. Um, yes, I do think that I'll take another one just in case. I also have um, pass these things down. Thank you. Some of the Yeah, yeah, they were already in collation. Oh, so I think we have these, though. I have all. Yeah, I have all these. I, I do. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you think, yeah. so the, the pie chart is just basically shows you the number of shifts that we've had two dispatchers working, counting myself as the working director on first and second shift. Um, there have been a lot of con uh, misconceptions that there's been two working at all times. Uh, that is not true. It is only when uh, staffing allows. And so those are the exact number of shifts for the months of February, March, and April that we've had um, two dispatchers working as well as May um, scheduled shifts. So it's not an all the time thing. Uh, the, the 2 2 1 formula um, is when staffing allows. Um, and so I just wanted to bring that to the committee's attention that it's not like, you know, seven days a week we have two people sitting there. And going forward, you know, obviously on. Um, holidays, you know, weekends, you know, uh, we I make sure to look at that schedule to make sure that we're not overstaffing based on call volume. Mm -hmm. uh, primarily Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I would say are our busiest days. Um, so those are the days that you're going to want to have two people on the desk. 
Um, certainly when you have a major medical incident, somebody having a heart attack or something, um, you know, the benefit of two dispatchers, trained dispatchers working in tandem, um, providing those EMD instructions, getting an ambulance there, um, sending the police uh, is critical. It can it literally save seconds, seconds save lives. That's sort of a, a 911 model. We understand that, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, ju I just wanted to make that point to the committee. So it isn't an all the time thing. Um, and then uh, a couple other points I wanted to make is that um, you know, I know there were some comparisons that were used. Um, you know, comparing us to Hamden, I think, is wholly unfair. Uh, Hamden is a, a third the size. We have not compared us to Hamden. Mm -hmm. We know that the population is much lower, mm -hmm. and the demand isn't as great as here. Yeah. So I just, I just wanted to make that point. Okay. Make sure the committee was aware of that. Uh, and when you look at other communities that do use two dispatchers, are comparable. Uh, Wilbraham uh, next door. Um, they're slightly smaller population, and they use a, a two to one formula. Again, it's not. All of the time, uh, you know, holidays and, and weekends um, are where they, they would cut back and work with one person on the desk. Uh, and then uh, Belchertown, uh, which I highlighted, um, has a, a plan where they work with uh, two dispatchers uh, on a certain portion of time. What about South Hadley? Uh, they, if uh, you look at uh, their sheet, they have one on all shifts, but they're trying to get a second for their third shift. They're currently short uh, a position. Um, that was part of their staffing, so they're trying, uh, they were in the process, I believe, uh, they just hired their fifth full-time dispatcher, so the goal is to have that position as a second dispatcher on the second shift, so that they, they plan on upstaffing for their second shift with that fifth full-timer. Okay. It, can I just ask, I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly what this is. Yes. Scott, is, is are these numbers below, like uh, the numbers in the first, 19, 21, 22, 22. Those are the number of days that there would be two dispatchers. Working. Number of days that so there would in be a, two you dispatchers. So in the month of April, for example, that, that's the number of days that you would see two dispatchers working. Same thing with, so it's not, you know, out of 30 days, you know, you may have 18 of them that are staffed with two people. Uh, it's not a... Um, so tell me this. Um, if we get another community, how many more people are you going to need? Um, it, it would depend on the size of the community, for example, like uh, next door along Meadow, mm -hmm. you know, you'd be doubling our population. Um, I would anticipate at that point you'd have to look at, um, you know, your, your call volume and your staffing levels. No, I, on the overnight shift, you could probably still keep one. Uh, depends how busy it, it got. But then you'd want to look at first and second shift where you'd want to, the days that you're working with one, you may want to put a, a second person in. You could do that with a part-timer where it wouldn't cause overtime or, or cost as much in terms of uh, benefits. Um, but, you know, you do want to look at the call. And in a case like that, you'd be doubling, you know, the population. Uh, so you'd want to, uh, you want to really look at the call volume on that. And it would be possible if it, it, another community did join us, they'd want to bring over some of their own dispatchers. That is that is incorrect, uh, believe it or not. I've, I've actually pulled some examples of some of uh, uh, the intermunicipal agreements between uh, regional uh, facilities and mm -hmm. uh, regional dispatch centers. So I guess the best way to put that would be uh, that whatever community hosts it sort of dictates the terms, and it's the other communities that would sign on. Um, our model going forward would be that... Um, you know, we would be the host community. So then the other community, um, their employees, you know, maybe we, we would hire another full-timer out of, you know, a group of, you know, five or six, but, you know, we certainly wouldn't um, be looking to take on another, you know, five, six people. Um, that just, it wouldn't happen. That's the whole purpose of consolidating and regionalizing is to, you shrink that, you know, you, but you'd certainly at that point, you'd want two people, you know, maybe seven days a week, you know, on first and second shift because you have a, a increase in population, an increase in call volume. Right. Um, but then the benefit that the town would get is that the state grant money that the other community was getting would then come to you. Um, so you're you know, increasing your state uh, 91 grants, um, as well as, you know, depending on how the municipal agreement was structured, you could do a, a flat fee or you know, population-based formula um, based on or call, some communities have them based on calls for service. You know, so if, uh, you know, for example, if we were to take on uh, Springfield and, you know, your call volume, you know, increases times 10, then, mm -hmm. you know, some, some communities do it based on the calls for service. They do it based on population. And you'd have to look at that in the intermunicipal agreement. Yeah. And you mentioned in uh, the last paragraph on your first page about the state grants. Um, so it, the 911 grant 
is up to 85,000 this year. Correct, and that's an, an increase of about 20,000 from last year's is fiscal that, plan. Is that number reflected? Your budget as submitted uh, is requesting, I believe, I don't have the documents with me because mm -hmm. we were finalizing today, but I believe it was 419,000, somewhere in that vicinity. So are you, is the 85,000 in addition to that? It is not in addition to that. It's uh, the state 91 grant is a reimbursement grant. So you have to spend that money first and then you submit uh, for reimbursements, uh, whether okay. it's personnel costs, whether it's, you know, this year we had a little bit more startup costs, um, you know, next year I'd anticipate, you know, most of that going to offset personnel costs. It's also training, right? There's training, yeah, the state training requirements, correct. And it pays for that after we pay for it. Yes. Okay, any other I, questions? I, I, I do, through the chair. Um, on non-salary expenses, uh, 5270 there's $31,000 uh, plus in there for rental slash lease office equipment. I think we went through that We yesterday. have, uh, I, I know the co there's a, a the council group, yeah, the dispatch councils, um, there's a lease agreement. We have a, uh, a lot of software and stuff that we have to, you know, um, annual maintenance. Yeah, fees I on. Okay. think we went over that yeah. yesterday. Uh, we did, I just, I, yeah. for clarification, yeah, okay. And that doesn't go away, you know, so, and, and you know, I get the committee's position, you know, is a, is a tough position. Uh, no matter what you guys decide to do, you know, there's a cost. If you, and, you know, the officers now aren't trained on the new software, so if you uh, went back and now we can't fill our shifts with civilian and you have to backfill with officers, there's going to be a cost to that we going to, forward. Scott, I'm going to stop you right there. Mm -hmm. We can only recommend. Mm -hmm. We don't make the decision. So, you know, it'll be entirely up to the council. These are things we've looked at, looked at in depth. Uh, making cuts is not an easy job. And uh, balancing a budget, there are so many moving parts to this, and there are so many costs embedded in going forward from the fiscal 19 budget. Uh, we understand the department's positions, but um, there's one gentleman in our budget hearing that said you have to do more with less. And I took that to heart. So. Um, Thank you for giving this as additional information, but uh, we'll have to deliberate. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, and what's the last thing on the agenda? I'm going to move Jim to. Um, did you have extra copies for us today? Uh, uh, of the worksheet, not of the, not of the report yeah. that we'll hopefully present tonight. But okay. Well, at least the chief finalized it. Yeah. I'll give you to pass them out. Sure. Okay, this is one stack. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm going to need a copy. Oh, sorry. Old. No, no. I, I thought we this one was enough to that, 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 that this is yeah, yeah. Uh, they're not together, correct? Yeah, yeah, I didn't have time to staple them. It was either that or be late. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you get away from your computer this weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Distributing this uh, just to our committee members. Yes, yes. Still a worksheet. So. Um, I guess you and I will have some work to do this afternoon. Uh -huh. So uh, this is uh, used the format. One one change uh, in the first page is a projected new growth. Uh, it really doesn't help things in terms of the projected mill rate right. to try to increase the new growth because all it does is add to the tax levy. Yeah. Uh, in my former years in the appropriations committee, we've we've always been strapped so hard to to fund expenses within the limit of Proposition Two and a Half that new growth, more new growth, always gave us a little bit more ability to tax. Uh, which is not the case. Which is uh, not what we thankfully, want to for for the town, is not the case that yeah. that we find ourselves in. So it didn't seem to any point to to project, project uh, more growth there. 
that was the only change. The the um, oh, I, I think this was a change that maybe I did yesterday. Um, the additional thirty-two thousand that I had in state aid is actually um, offset for the library, so it actually was not additional not state aid. So I took that thirty-two thousand out. So the only addition to the to the state aid is the twenty thousand. the money to chapter that the seventy. Okay. House and the Senate committees have at least uh, proposed to add to the chapter seventy. Um, kept the uh, the twenty thousand increase in excise tax. So the only difference really between uh, the managers. Proposed sources or projected sources in ours is the forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay. Increase. Okay. Increase in sources, yes, yeah. and and non non tax sources. Right. Uh, so education. Projected. Yes, <laughs> yeah. projected. Yeah. Uh, we show <coughs> the, show the items that we're reducing. Uh, the new positions. Nothing's changed except the down below. We have the seventy six. 960 plus the 1.45 percent. Um, um, I was wondering why that, okay. That's uh, the payroll tax. Okay. I assume would come off of uh, payroll taxes. Okay. So the, the changes between education and, and uh, general government expenses or uses is 539.972. We reduced the $100,000 um, the OPEB. Line item for OPEB, so that brings us to 639.972. We had no changes in our recommendations for the capital, so that was still 112.657. Um, the 306 is just after I got finished spreading this all out and breaking it out <laughs> line item by line item, uh, I'm off by 306.77, and there is just no time yeah. to try, <laughs> to, <laughs> track that to, that try to find it. So. Uh, against the 752, I, I deemed it. Um, I deemed it non-material, <laughs> and and adjusted it so that the mill rate projection would be would would what, be consistent bottom. with all the exhibits. Are you you're still using um, the 1.25 increase? I thought. Well, we uh, I saw your note on my brief. watch, uh, and I yeah. did have a chance to. Uh, on the on the presentation sheet showing mill rate, uh, I've hidden the uh, so it doesn't show. Okay. Uh, projected. Okay. Um, so we'll we'll go back and use the one point nine billion. I, yes, and here it 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 does show. Um, let's see the FY projected FY twenty mill rate based on the FY nineteen valuation. Yeah. Which on page three is the second to last. Row. Okay. Uh, that is the 2207 that coincides with the 429 budget, and for us it it would be 2167. So basically a 40 cent yeah uh, change, and that's what we would show. And that okay. Uh, any comments from the other committee members? We started out. Uh, 2260 20, 20, oh. with the yes the, on the, the draft. overall the draft budget and then we uh, town manager reduced it eight cents to 2208 2207 2207 yeah okay so that that was a reduction of right. 53 cents mm -hmm. from 20 from 2260 to 2207. I don't think it was 2260 though. I'm trying to remember what that number it was. It wasn't? Yeah. No, 2215, I thought. Yeah. 2215. Yeah, I know it was only okay. reduced like eight cents Sorry. or so. Yeah. So minus eight. So and then what I'm trying to come up with is yeah. so we've reduced it. We, uh, we reduced it an additional 792,000 or 40 cents. 40 cents, yeah. yeah. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, forty yeah, cents. Forty cents. And it was seven ninety two, right? On the forty cents. Yeah. Yeah, seven ninety two, three twenty two, twenty seven. Yeah. And that's uh, uh, without knowing what the 
may happen later this summer with the, with the state. Yeah, with, well, that's it with state aid and the increase in valuation. Uh, you may do better. Still not as good as I'd like it to be. No. It's, a, uh, it's an increase of $1.62 on the rate. Well. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's a lot. That's a lot for people to absorb when their values went up right. last and year. And that's cutting. I mean, they, the request was nine full-time positions. Yeah. And uh, only four part-times, and we've only allowed one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Jim, you're, what's... Well, I, I can just kind of give you a sense as to... Uh, so we're, the idea is to kind of keep it in the same format mm -hmm. as... The 326 oh, okay. and the 429. So I, I don't have time or the or the um, talent to make it pretty with the pictures. So <laughs> this will just be a cover page. Uh, so this will be our our. And I'm sorry I didn't don't have copies and I don't think my no, printer no, would fine. have we'll punched that enough. Today. Today. But this is the basically lines up to our worksheet here shows the forty thousand dollar increase in sources. Other okay. than that, it's basically the same as the 429 budget. Okay. And then we come to each of the department line items, salary and non-salary. Yeah. So um, there, I know Chris, you've had a chance to look at my little comments. Yes, I did. Um, and I they're couldn't just print it out because it, it the, wasn't oh, landscape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, they're, so they're fairly terse. I mean, they're not yeah. meant to like go into. I, I fear that's what our that's what we're there for. Yes. If there's something else. For the questions. Um, so it just changes it in the format that it shows and and lines up to our numbers on our worksheet. Um, so we have the five hundred thirty nine six sixty five and in the general fund budget uh, uses and then the capital planning and then the OPEB. Uh, so it backs into our 752 that we were showing. And the difference between 752 and the, and what we made in changes is the additional 40,000 yeah. in non-tax revenue. So, so that's that's that part. And, and then going with uh, summary sources and uses, again, it's just the same thing um, that we used that was used before, but we have a column for our recommendations. Thank you, Sarah. Sorry. And um, and then again, just kind of like where all our uh, little comments yeah. are, and that brings us to the 752 change in general uses, general fund uses, and 792 322 change in overall, which uh, includes the 40,000 in additional revenue. Okay. Are we at? Oh, you're not finished. Uh, well, this is the this is the mill rate. Well, oh, this is oh, a page okay. instead okay. of the bar graph. I blew up, and this is pretty much from our worksheet, uh, yeah. page three of the worksheet. Number one, the mill rate projection. Yeah. Uh, and then underneath that, the reserve balance analysis. Just so. Uh, okay. People can see, and I'm still using, and maybe I'm old-fashioned, and it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> apply. But I'm also I'm still thinking of reserves as the stabilization fund plus the undesignated fund balance. That is correct. Okay. Okay, and then you have the um, then capital then project. The staying with the with the order that uh, the other presentations have. Yeah, that looks good. It's the best we can do. Technically, the bond rating agencies, when they consider our reserves, they also do consider the OPEB trust. Um, oh, so yes. Therefore, we're not penalized for moving from free cash oh. into the OPEB uh. trust. So when they are looking at the rating, they consider uh. that. But if you're looking in reserves as in um, areas that we could tap into, the OPEB would not be. No, I, I par partly it was rating. also how outside agencies mm -hmm. would view okay. the town's financial so stability. Based on that, then you want to All right, so it might be worth at least adding another one to show both with and without. Uh, I don't know that I, I think you've, you've pointed out what it is, but I'm not sure I wrote it down in okay. terms of the OPEB so trust you fund want balance. The OPEB trust as of um, today? Or, or whenever's the most. And that's it? Just yeah. the one? I, okay. I think okay. so. You want to put it 
put that yeah, back I gave up. It. I have a question for Sarah. Um, in the town manager's budget, there was an amount and it's a for the total amount for the debt service. Yep. And the bonding that's going to take place for perhaps, well, next month sometime. Is that in that figure? Uh, the bonding that has been approved already for the medical proof. Yeah. Um, and then the potential bonding for the items that were in um, on the capital sheet that were recommended for bonding, all of that bonding cost was included in there because the bonding for the roof we are not doing in June. We are doing after the project complete. We're doing in the fall, beginning of the fall. Okay. So, so that two million nine zero three six zero nine is is a pretty solid <coughs> fi figure for fiscal twenty then. Is that what you're saying? No. Where did you get? The, I'm sorry. Which two million number? That that's the debt service total in yep. the town manager's proposed budget. Yes. Yep. So that would include the bonding. Okay. The proposed bonding. Okay. So once the projects are complete, it might be a little bit less um, because we yeah. did assume right. the maximum right. amount for right. each right. of those projects. Um, but yes. Okay. And we did reach out to the financial advisors and did projections based on if we were to close today and all of that. So we did take that all into consideration. And you will see that it's actually, uh, we put it on the line for 752 is the department number. I think so. And yeah, then, um, no, I mean, yeah. it is. <laughs> um, and so we put it all there just to make it nice and easy for you to see. Okay. Um, so then the other numbers are the numbers that we already had bonded previously. So all it wasn't right. as confusing. All right. Very good. Well, I have a question just, just to recap. I just wanted to run this by Jim. So in essence, we're looking at on our mill rate approximately a dollar twelve cents north of where that number was last year. And if we were to try to work and remove twelve cents, which I I could only speculate, would that would be approximately trying to find another two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Would you agree with that? The numbers that I gave you? If we're coming down to twenty one sixty seven Last year's rate was twenty two oh five. It's a dollar and sixty two cent increase. Correct. No, last year was twenty fifty five. Yeah, I said a dollar twelve. Oh, the tax rate. I'm sorry. Twenty fifty five. I have yeah. so much money. Okay, so. <coughs> so that part. So correct. that's better. So it's a dollar twelve, and if we were to try to keep it at a dollar, and I'm just saying that because it was an arbitrary number that we, yeah. uh, you know, a yeah. goal that we tried to achieve, that's, that's, that would be $250,000 to find. Would you? Yeah. Close? Yeah. Well, okay. how are we Using our here? projections that we've been using right along. Okay. Um, last item on the agenda. Uh, I would entertain it, any discussion or any motion if you want to change anything that we've originally decided on the uh, emergency communication center the dispatch if not I pretty much the same case as with Don that we've made some decisions and recommendations and they will go forward yeah I, I'm not I'm not prepared to change, I guess, uh, yeah. although I, I feel a little badly that maybe we li misunderstood the rationale for the for it, but uh, if, if it were to be come back at any time later to the town council or something, I certainly would recommend, and I know it's not always, it's not preferable route, but additional part-time hours, if there was a way to work that in and make it useful would be much much more economical for the town than, than increasing that uh, a person from part time to full time. Yeah. Yeah. And my concern is uh, I, from the information that I know, and it's pretty extensive, uh, there are no communities left to join with in our region. So that's my concern is that we're going to be stuck on our own uh, for the foreseeable future unless someone bails out of a current contract or agreement that they're already in the midst of signing. And I'd just like to add a financial piece to that, yeah. that um, I don't want to lose my number. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, you know, when we were looking at a reduction, we uh, correlated that from ours, and we ended up deducting, if, if I'm looking at this correctly, 78,075. 
And if you were to put a true value on staffing the first shift and the second shift, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, times a rate of approximately 1850 an hour, that is about 108000 So there is room left in there for additional staffing, but that's, that's not what we do here. Right? No. We're, this yeah. is our budget. We're giving them numbers to work from, and hopefully they can staff it accordingly. Yeah, that's really the town manager's job is to, you know, we assign a budget. I, I say we, I mean the council, and they have to work within the confines of that budget. That, end of story. And that's what they, the council chooses to do and votes on a certain amount. Town manager needs to find a way to make it work. If she's working with a department head that feels it's, you know, it's not going to work in its current, um, you know, funding, they need to make it work. That's the challenge every department has. Absolutely. Any other issues? Uh, Jim, how you're going to make some changes? Um, I yeah, I, I'll, uh, I think what I'd like to do is perhaps in the reserve analysis is include a line showing our OPEB trust fund balance. Okay. Because uh, I think if, if it is included in, you know, outside parties analysis of the financial stability of the town, I think it would be helpful to show. Yeah. To include it. Uh, okay. Other I, than that, I'm, I'm not sure that we have a lot of changes. No. I, I have a change to my, um, the statement I intend to make. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. So and I that, guess doesn't, we, that change doesn't change the numbers. No, it doesn't. Um, <coughs> so um, you and I can get together on the logistics of getting copies. Yeah, unfortunately, they're all, as I'm sure <laughs> Sarah's aware of it, there, there's like four different spreadsheets that make up this. So it's not, it's not really that simple to just... No. Um, <laughs> share copies electronically right uh, right and uh, so um, no we'll we'll have copies for this evening but okay. what what you'll see tonight will coincide with with the, the numbers format, that yeah. we, we, had there. we looked at this yeah. morning do okay. we know what that uh, percentage increases percentage increase in in, in the mill rate the oh well you figure, okay. Uh, I don't know if you figured it 21, out. 21, right? no, didn't try. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. And that's why if you had any suggestions and changes in the formatting of it, I, you know. So we were at 2167 and we went up from 2055. I actually find it very so easy to follow. 5.45 percent. What is it, Jim? Increase, 5.45 percent, based on our recommendations. Um, I thought of adding the the 419 budget and then trying to show percentage increase or whatever, but then it gets then it gets kind of complicated because you've got that budget and then you've got the the the, the 429 budget and are you, you going to show the increase against that one or? It, and then I almost thought of trying to put mill rates to each of the changes or whatever, but yeah, um, then it just kind of we just almost makes the conversation more complicated. We yeah. don't have the time. It, and that's basically yeah. the main reason. We right. don't have the time. I, I, I did some basic calculations uh, over our tax history for the past uh, eight years, and uh, I, I shared that with uh, Kathy so far. But uh, we're, we're basically back to our FY 2017 year, where the tax rate was 2163. Um, over the last few years, we were able to reduce that. Uh, this year, with everything coming to a head with the with fire, with the ambulance service, uh, and dispatch, uh, yeah, and the, and and the schools, the, and the wage studies, yeah, and the wage and studies, the it's, wage. that's adding Collins Center, yeah, that's adding to this, and you know our current environment, and it's just something that sounds like a state mandate that's really. Outside the control of what we're what we're trying to cut. Yeah, it's what we call the perfect storm. Yeah. <laughs> well, it can get worse. <laughs> yeah, it could have been worse. worse. Yeah. But we're. I mean, in, in 2017, we we're at 2163. Yeah. 
and then yeah. it lowered the 2094, and then it went to 2055. Remember, the values were going up. Yeah. Right. So people weren't necessarily paying less money, they were paying more money, <laughs> even yep. though the rate was lower. Lower. So. Yeah. Yeah. So just as a clarification, Tom, I think we allowed two full-time positions. One mm -hmm. was the help desk oh, administrator, and, the education. and then the social, the one social emotional teacher. Well, yes. we we didn't fund a, a position. We gave them money to do what Correct. they chose yes. to do, Correct. choose yes. to yes. do with it. True. I mean, that's been the yes. discussion right we, along. We want to make sure we're clear on that. Money. Yeah. 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 That would, would be sufficient yeah. for. Yeah. In and, general and government, we believe do me. That. Yeah, I I, yeah. I heard that yeah. last year very clearly. <laughs> that. We we cannot direct them. We the council cannot direct them what to do with their right. money, and they can choose to use it for other sources that they they want to. And they that was stated in the meeting that you are correct. And so we're going to give them money, and if they choose to fund a position and use it across the two schools, that, that's their choice. If they want to, they can find money. Yeah. Well, we've had that discussion. Yeah. So. Nothing else on the order of business. We've got to get prepared for this evening's meeting. Um, and I want to thank all of you on this committee. You have done yeoman's work. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for your input, Kathy. Um, cooperation we received from Sarah as far oh. as giving us uh, numbers and, and guiding us at times <laughs> uh, to make sure we, we were accurate. Jeannie, thank you for taking the minutes and for arranging our meetings. Uh, you've been a big part of this. Thank oh, you thank very you. much. My pleasure. So with that said, I'll entertain a motion move, to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.